A lot of wisdom comes off this pulpit, amen? When I was a young man, this isn't my message. It's a, it's a blessing and a privilege to be here, amen? Welcome. I'm happy to be at Bayview Baptist Church. I hope you are as well. Um, I know when I was younger, this doesn't have anything to do with my message. When I was younger, uh, I didn't like advice, amen? I kind of thought I knew it all. <laughs> it gets funnier as I get older, amen? Yeah, <laughs> I thought I knew it all, so, uh, you know, why were these people telling me what to do, you know? <laughs> and now, now I come to a little bitty church in San Pedro, and I'm hoping somebody will tell me, amen, what I need to hear, because it's good, Amen. Uh, got the privilege to sit in on a conversation. Uh, Doc is, is very patient, amen, and I'm glad he is because I'm, I, I, that's one of the qualities I'm working on. But he said some nice things to a young lady, and I, I thought, man, there's like 500 things I'm going to tell this lady, and I'm just going to tell her right now, man, and she needs to hear it all. Just take a deep breath, amen, take a deep breath, little, little bite at a time, Amen. But uh, one of the thoughts that came to me went something like this. Um, are you interested in the truth, amen, or do you just want to prove that you're right, amen? Uh, it's kind of a rough thought, you know. That, that's one of those secrets to life. If you're, if you're interested in the truth, God will make it plain to you. He will explain it. He will. He's just amazing, amen? Um, tonight I have a little bit of a rough message, amen. If you would, open your Bibles to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I've been told, I, I try to listen, amen. I, I, um, God has given me the, the, the pleasure and the privilege of being around some, some great men of God, at least in my estimation, amen, and in others as well. And, and, and I've, I've heard them talk, and, and usually they, have, uh, they say about young preachers, young preachers just yell and scream at people and tell them how bad they are. You know, they're, they're re very rough. On the congregation, amen, and, and as, as they mature, they tend to, to um, uh, how would I say that, amen, with wisdom, yeah, <laughs> smooth is not the right word, uh, biblically speaking, amen, but they, they tend to have a good balance to that, amen, well, tonight's message is kind of a rough one, amen, so it's kind of put on your seat belt, amen, I, I don't have an axe to grind, I don't hate anybody, Except Doc. Amen, Doc. You know, you're just, ah, you know, he's got the cool glasses. Amen. He dresses. Nah, just everybody else, you're good. Amen. But me and Doc, we're, we're getting there. Amen. But uh, I have this to say, man, we are living in the sissy generation. Amen. This is the generation that is famous for needing a safe space. Whatever that is and wherever that is, I haven't found it myself. I don't think it's on a college campus, amen, or anywhere else in this life, amen. I've heard of, of people being in their uh, gated community inside their house and a, and a fighter jet comes down out of the sky because it broke down and crashes into the house and kills them. I think they thought they were in a safe space, amen. But, but like I said, we're living in a society where offending others is a terrible travesty, amen. Heaven forbid that Nathan would get his feelings hurt. Amen? We're living in a generation where if you say something and it just sounds mean, people look at you funny. Amen? We live in a generation where even if it's true, you just shouldn't say it. Amen? You know, nobody... <laughs> I, it's so bad it's affecting me. Like, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to say these things, right? Nobody's fat anymore. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody's bald. Nobody's losing their hair. Yeah. I, I'm surprised to learn that every time I look in the mirror. You know, I thought I did. I thought I was. I thought I was going bald. I thought I was losing my hair, but obviously that's not true. That would be unkind and terrible. So it's not true, guys. You guys just, you need better glasses. Amen. I have a beautiful full head of hair. Amen. Amen. Bro. I have some friends in this room. Amen. 
But, but we're living in that generation where you're just not allowed to say anything unkind. There are people that, that believe they're Christians and they say, oh, you need to be kind like Jesus. Amen. That same Jesus that said those beautiful kind words like, ye generation of vipers. Oh, that's just so sweet. Amen. And, and so I'm here to, to, and this is probably the wrong way to say it, but I'm here to push back a little tonight. And so here tonight, um, who is going to be the examples of courage and grit for young Christians? Amen. This rough message is for you. And my message tonight, Bella's going to love this, is toughen up buttercup. Amen. Oh. Title of my message is toughen up buttercup. Amen. Uh, here in the Bible, if you're to read a, 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 the the history, I don't like to call them the story, a history of the people in this Bible that you look up to, those Christians, those God-fearing people that are in the Bible, each and every one of them is going through hardship, amen? Each and every one of them has some courage. Each and every one of them is not some little <laughs> cowering in the corner, amen? In their hearts, they might be like that. There's that chance that as, as David's going towards Goliath, he's thinking, Maybe this ain't a great idea. Amen? He still goes. Amen? He still goes. So toughen up, buttercup. That's the, the title of my message. Amen? And we're here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, a familiar verse. Most of you could probably quote it for us. It says this, uh, chapter 2 and verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now I like I like uh, context. Like Pastor was was preaching this morning. So let's start in verse one. Amen. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Verse three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Uh, toughen up, buttercup. Uh, we're going to focus on verse 3. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The first word that I'd like to focus on in this verse is this, endure endure hardness as a good soldier. Amen. Notice that it doesn't say, the verse doesn't say, put up with a little bit of slightly uncomfortable inconvenience. Amen. Uh, that's what you're being taught by society. Amen. Oh, just put up with, with having to wait in line. Amen. For a minute or two. Amen. Uh, you just endure if, you're, if your uh, service on your phone cuts out for a second or two. Amen. You just, you just endure like a good soldier. Amen. Uh, but it says endure. We'll start with that word endure. Uh, if you would back up to verse 2, it says this. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. The, the main part of enduring is this, you have to remain faithful. That is the point that we're going to start with. Nothing sends you down the road. To endure is to keep going and not stop, Amen. not break, not give up. not leave it to someone else. And I'm not sure why, but I'm going to park it there just for a second. Not leave it to someone else. We got a lot of people that say, oh, it looks like some hard work to do. I'm sure they'll get it done. <laughs> oh, that looks like it's going to be tough. I wish you luck. Amen. Yeah, come on. It's good. Endure. Amen. Endure. And I don't know why, but I'm going to say that again. That means not leaving it to the next person Amen. in line. Good. Come on. Amen. That seems to happen a lot, doesn't it? Amen. Yeah. Any volunteers in here? Any volunteers? Well, what's the job? <laughs> Amen. It's good to count the cost. Okay, we're going to tell you. Here's the job. Well... Is that going to include a Thursday night? 
Uh, yeah, 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 that's going to include a Thursday night. We're already going to church on Wednesday, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're already going. If somebody had to guarantee that they had to leave it with somebody who was guaranteed to be here next Sunday night, would you be the first person that popped on their mind? Faithfulness is, it, you're not asking, you know, what are the conditions, amen? Endure. How's your faithfulness? Are you able to keep going? I, I, I know I've probably asked the same question here before, probably from the same pulpit, but, but what would it take you, what would it take to send you down the road? Eric said something mean about me <laughs> from the pulpit. Oh, no. And I put sugar in his gas tank. And... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> endure. Let's start with endure. Are you able to endure? Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Some of these points, I might stop for a second or two because I think it'd be good for you to think about what's being said. Not because I'm saying it, probably less so much because I'm saying it, but, but because, you know, as, as we go over each and every one of these points, I really believe that God put these on my heart. Amen? I'm not here to yell and scream at Pablo. Amen? We've got Karen for that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Us married men, we don't... Oh, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> Are you able to endure? <laughs> we better move on. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to start reading in verse 5. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 5 says, I speak to your shame. Is it so that, this is not, that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren? But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Would you endure even if it came from the brethren? For me, it's much easier to take when it's somebody outside the church, isn't it? Amen. Uh, when I go out witnessing, amen, and I'm holding a, 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 a Bible sign out on, on First and Gaffey, and they go by and they cuss me off and flick me off, I think I'm kind of expecting that, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's your IQ. I say the same things to myself you do. Come on. Amen. Ooh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. I know. I'm number one. Well, it's really Jesus. Amen. Good job. You got it right. Amen. And they come by and they cuss at you and they honk and they turn up their music. And I'm, I'm, I expect that. Amen? I expect that. But what about when it's somebody in the church? Now, I'm not saying this should happen, but we know it does. Amen? Every once in a while, we get in a bad mood. No, no, no. Not you guys. Let me say that differently. Every once in a while, I get in a bad mood. Every once in a while, I have a bad mood. Every once in a while, I don't say it just right. Amen? Every once in a while, I'm a little short with people. Sure. Are you able to endure even when it comes from your brothers and sisters? Even more so. Yeah. Because endure isn't part-time. Right. Endure isn't until Sharon says something mean. <laughs> endure isn't until... Somebody does something that I don't like until somebody sits in my seat. Whatever the case may be, amen, uh, are you able to endure? Are you able, even able to endure when it comes from within the church? Are you able to endure when it comes from your friend? That was one of the tougher ones for me, and I think I've said that before, but when my, when my, my childhood friends turned on me, that was heartbreaking, man. I mean, those people that I spent years and years with, I mean, hours after hours, spent time at their houses, you know, uh, 
poured my heart out unto them. Amen. And then they turn their back on me. How discouraging, man. How rough that was. You know, these are the people that, they were more like my family than the f folks that were blood to me. Amen. And when they turned, man, I, th I remember talking to Dave. Amen. I said, you know, uh, I keep witnessing to my friends. Amen. But, but I, <laughs> I said it. I said, but, but I don't want to let go of them, you know. And he said, and he said it to me. He said, you know, don't you worry. You keep witnessing and they'll let go of you. And no, no, you don't know my friends. Amen. You, you, uh, you, <laughs> you lack wisdom, man. Uh, no, no, he was right on. Amen. Can you endure even when it comes from your friends and the brethren? That's tough. Amen. I remember when I first started coming to church, I was like most people, amen. I, I came from a rough background, amen. I came from the world. And so when I got here, I thought I was, I was surrounded by the angelic host, amen. I thought every single one of these people just floats in on a cloud, and here I am, amen. And so I was just sitting here, and, and you know, they like, they knew Bible verses, and they knew where to turn, and they sang the song. Some of them didn't even use the book, and I'm thinking, who are these godly people that are around me, amen. And I still will say they are the best people on planet Earth, amen, amen. amen. But then every once in a while, I would notice, like, that person seems to be upset. Like, that's not even possible. They're Christians. Amen? I had this general idea that I was, too. But, you know, I was, I was on, you know, probation or something. I don't know. But, but then, you know, every once in a while, they would, you know, they would, they would be upset that I was wearing a rap T-shirt, you know? And they... They didn't seem to like my music, and uh, they thought smoking drugs was a bad idea. They had all kinds of weird ideas, amen? And, and so I would say this, are you, are you able to endure? I'll admit this is a tough one, but you're still supposed to endure. One of the things that makes me hesitate preaching this is because I think I'm preaching to people that have been through more than me. You know, who am I to sit up here and say, you need to endure, amen? Uh, <laughs> Some people have been through a lot. Yep, sure. right. Some people are still going through it, don't we know? Yes, sir. Amen. I feel like mentioning their names, but I probably shouldn't. Amen. You know who they are. They're on your prayer list. Amen. But, but how about you? Are you able to endure even when it comes to the friends that you have? I'll say this next. Endure hardness. Endure hardness. There's a lot of hardness in this world. Man's ability to damage his fellow man is clearly seen throughout the entirety of man's history. I watched the History Channel, amen, the, the Military Channel. I used to have those. I don't think I do anymore. I can't tell you right now, amen. But, but uh, you know, you, you look back through these wars, amen, and war after war after war, amen, the atrocities that are happening, amen. There, there's a lot of hardness in this life, amen. Uh, you need only to go back to Genesis chapter 4 and verse 9 where uh, a gentleman says, Am I my brother's keeper? Amen. I mean, creation is just a... Why don't you go there? Why don't you go to Genesis chapter 4? You know the story, amen. But, I mean, this is the hardness that exists in life, amen. Creation has just taken place. God has created the perfection that is paradise, amen? The Garden of Eden, amen? Man's on this planet, perfect fellowship with God, amen? One generation later, amen? Genesis chapter 4, <laughs> amen? In that book, you know, you read through it, it doesn't take it, uh, maybe for you it doesn't, it doesn't take me a day or two, amen? It takes me a little while to get through that book, amen? We're in Genesis chapter 4, and right there, Cain says, the example, right? Weren't you just saying that just earlier? Are you Cain? Is that your example, amen? Am I my brother's keeper? What is the hardness that exists in this world? A brother taking his brother's life. And that's how it starts off, amen? Let's kick this thing off, amen? What do you say? Okay, hey, you just knock that guy out, amen? 
what a rough world we live in, amen? And I'm not trying to depress you or anything like that because we are truly just traveling through. We are just wanderers in a, in a foreign land waiting to go home to heaven, amen? But here in this world, there is hardness, amen? There is hardness. Uh, the creation is just finished. This guy's murdering his family member. The sad part is there's just hardness coming. I would guess for almost everyone in this room, it has already arrived. Amen. I don't think I need to go into a lot of detail on this one because life has a way of explaining this one very clearly. You talk to folks and sometimes they say, I'm good when you talk about Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm good. Amen. Yeah, yeah, you I, you know, usually it's the young folks that say that. Amen. Oh, I'm good. Oh, my. <laughs> I, I don't have a lot of wisdom, but I know. <laughs> I know this world, what it has to offer, and man, I mean, your, your, your life can change in a phone call. That's right. That's right. You know? I got, a, I got a phone call. Well, I didn't even get the phone call. I remember my mom coming to me one day. She comes to me and she's got tears coming down her face. And what's happening? She takes me by the arms and she goes, your dad's dead. Everything was fine. Amen. I'm just going through life. Amen. I'm the wild party here. I'm, I got a healthy family. Everybody's doing fine. I'm just this wayward kid. The the prodigal son that's just out in the world trying to destroy myself as quickly as possible. And that's when my mom looks at me with tears, a single phone call. Whole life turned upside down. Hardness comes, doesn't it? Hardness comes, man. I, I wish it didn't. Amen. Uh, some people say this, this world is heaven. Uh, you got the wrong idea. Amen. I don't, I don't know where you live. Amen. But doesn't seem to matter how much money you got, how much popularity, fame, or health, or anything else, amen. Trouble comes to all of us. Uh, the simplest and the best thing that I have to say about this point is this. Uh, you're not alone. You're not alone. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You're not alone. I'm sorry for the troubles that you go through. Uh, the devil will whisper in your ear, you've been left, uh, you've been forsaken, there's nobody with you. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, I don't like uh, the troubles that come with life, but, but they, are, they are a part of it. Amen. Everybody's going to go through it at some point. Verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. Uh, it's just common to man. It's just common to man. When those troubles come, uh, you at least know you're not alone. If you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, not only are you not alone in, in your troubles, knowing that other people are going through them, uh, you're not alone in this fact that God is with you. Amen. God is with you. If you would go with me to Job chapter 5. I hope you, I do. I, I pray that the folks in this room have one of those lives that's just truly blessed from beginning to end. Amen. I hope you sail through life and your job is to pray for others and give them hope. Amen. It wouldn't bother me at all, amen, but, but here in Job chapter 5 and verse 7, what does it say? Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward, amen. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy, wow, time flies, amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 12. <laughs> Let's go back up to verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, 
which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. This, this life has many struggles to it. Amen. It is a rough life. And, and hopefully you're, you're just floating on top. Amen. But, but since those troubles are going to come no matter what, wouldn't it be better to, to live them as a Christian? And I, I probably use, I do use that word unbiblically, amen? Anybody who's, who's accepted the Lord Jesus Christ is a Christian, but, but as a disciple of God, wouldn't it be much better to, to go through those things with God right by your side instead of pushing Him away? Amen. Wouldn't it be better if as you go through, as those hard times come? You know, when my mom put her hands on my shoulders, I didn't have somebody to go to. I ran crying out the back door of the office, amen? There was nobody there. Just an alleyway, really. I was running, but to what? Those struggles come in life, and I'm sorry about it. Amen? Yeah. I don't want them to come. You know, I think of... I love my friend Bill Reynolds. Amen? I pray for him. Yeah. Amen? I love that, brother. Amen? But if life comes, amen, are you able to endure hardness? I should probably end this way, amen. There are usually two outcomes from enduring hardness. There are two, usually two outcomes for enduring hardness. When the troubles come, and you've probably seen this in life, the first one is this, to just clam up and get hard yourselves. How many Christians, the first time they try to help somebody, amen, they go out of their way, uh, they take money out of their pocket, time out of their day, amen, effort, passion and love and they go out and reach out to somebody else and just see it get just shoved in their face yep. Amen. Yep. try to help somebody and they don't they don't just turn you down they turn on you amen and you go that's it yeah i'm done yeah. i'll come to church but you want some help you better look for somebody else sure. amen sure. yeah sure that christian needs help i know what happens when you help christians amen <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. The prophet in the Bible, you're probably thinking about the same one I am. Look what I've been doing for you, Lord. What's it, at? What's it, what's it doing for me? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The hardness comes and that's it. I'm just going to cocoon myself. No more of that hurt. No more of that heartache. No more sorrow. I'm just going to harden myself to it. Whatever life has to dish out of me, I'm just going to stay in my bunker. Can you think of the psalm of David pouring his heart out to the Lord after his son has turned on him? Son dies in the battle. He's lost multiple children. Amen. There he is thinking about the sin that he's committed in his life and how it's wreaked havoc in everybody around him. And he's just pouring his heart out to the Lord. But he... Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Some people do harden. Amen. Stuff not to. I've been tempted myself many a time. Amen. Yes, sir. You know, you, <laughs> you do your absolute best and then those very same people are talking bad about you. You're like, that wasn't worth it. <laughs> Why would I do that again? Amen. Nah, and then you step out on a limb and you do it the second time. It's the same thing. That's enough for me, man. I appreciate it, man. Good luck with you. Amen. I'm just, I'm done. Endure hardness. Amen. Fine, I'll do it, Lord. What a... Have your pity party. Amen. I do. <laughs> but 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, you know how we started this? Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The world has a saying. Whatever doesn't kill you 
<laughs> makes you stronger. <laughs> but you know, when the hardness comes in your life, if you'll turn to God and you'll get as close as you can to him, you'll get a little stronger. And then something else happens and you get a little stronger. And even when something bad doesn't happen, you get a little stronger. And you keep reading that Bible. And you keep praying. And you keep searching for God. And you keep seeking after the truth. And you keep trying your best. And you keep witnessing. And you get turned down. And those doors get slammed in your face. And you just keep trying and trying and trying. And eventually, you know what happens? You know what happens as you endure that hardness? Something inside you grows. That faith that strength, that Holy Spirit's grip on your heart tends to grow and grow and get stronger. And you eventually get stronger in the grace. Amen? Amen. Stronger in grace. Pablo's going to hate me saying this. Amen? He's going to have to endure hardness. Amen? <laughs> I've been rough on Pablo every once in a while. <laughs> Amen? And he just takes it patiently. I try not to. I'm getting better at it. Amen. <laughs> I beat him up much less than I used to. Amen. But, but how about you? I'm sorry for the troubles that have happened in your life. Amen. I'm sorry for the struggles that come. I think of the things that happen in people's lives and it breaks my heart. Really. You know, it, it, what is that verse, you know, that uh, with wisdom comes sorrow. Amen. The more you know about other people's lives and what they're going through, ah, praying for them, man. You just want to cry sometimes, amen? Yeah. I can't wait to get home to heaven, Lord. Yeah. I can't wait, amen? amen? I don't want no more sorrow, amen? I don't want to see my friends going through it anymore, Lord. But while we're here, while we're here, can't we just endure a little hardness? Can't we just do our best to set our sights on that prize? Amen. Can't we look forward, press towards that mark of the high calling of God? Can't we treat God like he's worth doing a little extra for? No. Can we endure? Or are we going to be like the society around us? You know, I, I'm not up with all this stuff. Amen. I, I usually have to look half this stuff up. Amen. For me, like text messages with those you know, where they abbreviate, you know, IDK. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what that is. And I, I have to look, I have to Google it. Hey man, IDK, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Oh, I don't know. All right. All right. I don't know that I don't know. Hey man, this is good. Hey man. And you look at all this stuff and then there was this thing called a snowflake. I was like, what? A person is a snowflake. I don't. Okay. I don't know. To me, snowflakes are kind of cool. I don't know, you know. Everyone's different. I mean, they're this miraculous art piece that God creates, amen. So, so why are you calling them a snowflake? Because just a little bit of heat and they're gone. Snowflake. Does that describe you? <laughs> There's a couple. Good. I'm not the only one, amen. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> amen. So they call them a snowflake. Those are the people that are so easily hurt. Oh, oh, they call them snowflakes. Amen. They need a safe space. Amen. And, and they, they get triggered. I, you know, I had to look that one up too. You're triggered. What? Does that mean you've been shot? I don't get. Did, did you shoot somebody else? Why is the trigger involved? I don't understand these things. Amen. But they're triggered. Amen. Because somebody said something mean to them. Well, not really to them, but about somebody else that, that didn't really have anything to do with them, but, but it hurt their feelings. And, you know, and we look over at them and we laugh and we chuckle, amen, and then something comes in our life. Right. <laughs> then something comes in our life and then some Christian says the wrong word. Yep. And you're out there on the street and some Christian says, you know, it breaks my heart that you're saying these terrible things to these people. Oh, that was Bible, man. <laughs> the, the Bible. <laughs> you have a problem with God said. Hmm. Amen. Which one of us is doing right? Amen. But sorry, rough message. I'm not sorry. Amen. Rough message. How about it? Are you going to be, 
Well, I'll say it one more time. How about this? You ever see the guys that work out all the time? Yeah, you don't have to look at me. Amen? You don't have to smile when you look at me and say that, okay? But, but you ever see the guys that work out all the time? Amen? Those guys that have a mirror everywhere they look? Amen? You look, go to their house, oh, look, a mirror. Wow, that's full length. Yeah, it's, you, you married? Is that for your wife? Amen? And then you walk into the next room, another mirror. Okay, wow, hey. I hear it's good for the interior. It makes the place look bigger. Oh, another mirror. Amen. Wow. I mean, these people work out. Whatever they do, and they're just working out, and they're working out, and they're working out. Amen. And they have muscles on their muscles, and they have to re like, reach the back of their leg because their muscles get in the way. Amen. And you can see that they... They've endured hardness, amen? They are working out, amen? They are going through the pain. They want the gain, amen, and all that yeah. stuff, amen? Uh, are, are you spiritually strong? Good. Or are you the guy that goes by the gym and goes, ooh, <laughs> that looks tough, <laughs> amen? Me too. <laughs> Running for fun? Are you kidding me? <laughs> amen? Really? I mean, you know. That was a form of torture, right? I, uh, why would I do that to myself on purpose? Amen? But I know it's a carnal example, uh, but the visual is there. Amen? Are you going to be a good soldier or a sissy? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the folks in our Bible that we read about, Lord, I think of Paul and Job and David and these men, Lord, that just, they just endured, Lord. They kept their eyes looking towards you. They, they went through it, Lord, and, and through it all, they still, they still serve you, Lord. Paul saying that I'm ready to be offered, Lord, after being whipped and beaten. Lord, hearing the death sentence that's been pronounced against him, Lord, waiting in prison. Lord, if he can sing about you, help us to do the same. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't let this world affect us as we do. Lord, but to serve you with all that we have. Lord, all our strength and all our might and all our mind, Lord. Help us to be steady. Lord, help us to be faithful. And then help us to endure and get stronger. I thank you for all that you do, Lord. You've made it available. Help us to make the right choice. For I ask it in the name of my holy and precious Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.